Good evening everyone and welcome to the webinar, Perfect Match, Using MateCell to Identify the Best Size for Your Calves. I'm Gemma Wilkinson, um, I'm a Technical Officer with SBTS and our other presenter for tonight is going to be Christian Duff, also from Southern Beef Technology Services. So this is the first webinar in our series of four webinars for the series Ahead of the Curve. Uh, basically. This series is about um, the latest tools that are available for bull breeders with the idea that um, we can take you through all the new tools that have become available obviously and so that you can use them effectively in your breeding operation. The first webinar in the series is Perfect Match which we're going to be looking at uh, mate cell tonight. So now I'm going to hand over to Christian Duff to begin the webinar. Well, thank you, Gemma. Uh, we're just waiting for my screen to come up and uh, welcome everyone tonight. Tonight we're going to be taking you through the webinar, the first webinar in this course called Perfect Match, using mate cell to identify the best size for your cows. Uh, mate cell is a very new technology out of the breed plant stable, uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, introducing you to this new technology and uh, looking forward to your feedback uh, throughout the different sessions different course of this presentation where we'll pull up for questions and we encourage you to ask those questions, that's for sure, and interact. So just what we're going to do in this particular presentation is we will do a range of things, including outlining what mate cell does, including the benefits to seed stock producers. We're going to be talking about how you interact and access mate cell information. We're going to be going in detail about what's included in the mate cell report. And we're also going to be uh, looking at results from a trial mate cell analysis. So I've done a couple of scenarios uh, with a real herd and I think it's just good to look at that because it shows you what mate cell can actually do practically, uh, which is very important. Um, so I'm looking forward to taking you through that information tonight. So just taking you through uh, the first part of this presentation, uh, we get into a situation uh, at joining time uh, like this guy on our screen here scratching his bald head, where we have a range of size available to us, whether it's AI size or natural size or a combination of the two, and we've got a mob of cows ready to join. And I guess we get in a situation where we need to consider a range of things and hopefully get some really good outcomes from those joinings, because that's really the critical control point of making genetic gain and, and a range of other things. How do we actually best make those size to those cows to get the best outcome both long term, long term and short term? Some of the things we need to consider are such as the pedigree of the animals, uh, genetic gain and how that relates to our estimated breeding values and selection indexes. We need to think about inbreeding and genetic diversity, which is very important as well. We need to think about mating groups. How do we actually put our mating groups together, whether we're talking just AI or obviously natural? Um, how do we actually group our AIs and naturals and how do we select which cows goes into which programs? Uh, what about our heifer versus cow matings? How do we need to join those to our size um, to take into that account? What about things like genetic conditions? Uh, what do we do in that, that situation? Uh, so we need to think about that as well. So moving forward, um, what we now have is a tool which assists in this process called MateCell. Uh, and this is what it basically does. MateCell is a tool that assists us to identify which are the best size to join to the particular cows in our herd. Uh, so you can see in this very simple scenario, mate cell might say, okay, you've got four size. We actually recommend you use, you don't use one and you use three because you've got enough, that there enough to cover those animals. Um, and we recommend you join two to that group of size, three to that group of size, uh, that group of cows and four to that group of cows. So it's really there to help and provide a suggested mating list as such. Uh, one thing I should note at this point in time is mate cell and the engine driving mate cell was developed by Professor Brian, Professor Brian Kinghorn who's a professor in quantitative genetics at the University, uh, the University of New England here in Armidale, where I'm based. Um, and this technology is not just used in the beef industry, but uh, is used heavily across all species, particularly the pig industry, to assist in their mating decisions. So it's a, it's a really crucial technology across species as such. So to, to cut to the chase, what mate cell basically does is it provides a suggested mating list, as you can see on the screen there in front of you. Uh, what that is, is I'll go through this suggested mating list in more detail later on and what it does, but basically that's what it's about. It's about giving you a, a list of suggested matings which you can then look at and go and apply in your, in your joining decisions. 
Um, don't be too concerned about the information you see there. We'll go through in more detail later on. Uh, one thing I will point out at this point in time too, it is a suggested mating list. It's not saying this is the Bible and the joinings must go exactly as it says in this report. Uh, it's really there to say these are suggested matings. You'll probably make some changes given on additional knowledge you know about your herd and your, and your size. But uh, this, is, this is a suggestion we uh, give you going forward. So what are the benefits of using MateCell? Uh, MateCell enables us to do a range of things such as maximise the rate of genetic gain in the herd while minimising inbreeding. That's really the crux of MateCell. It's there to really balance between genetic gain and genetic diversity and, and inbreeding, which are the two things we need to think about it all the time. Um, one thing mates still also does is, is allows us to save significant time previously spent compiling mating lists. Obviously something that's uh, crucial to sea stock producers particularly is compiling mating lists. What size are they going to join to which cows, but it's AI and natural. And mate cell will allow you to fast track that by providing a suggested mating list. It obviously also allows you to make informed decisions about semen purchases, um, culling size particularly, do you use them or do you not in mating group formation and allocation. So it allows you to really make informed decisions about those with some additional independent advice, I guess you would say. It's also putting objectivity and proven science into the mating decisions. Again, I'll say that it was developed by Professor Brian Kinghorn and has a lot of scientific rigor behind it. Um, and I think also importantly, it offsets the cost of pedigree and performance recording because obviously one of the reasons we go to the trouble and the effort in the sea stock industry of pedigree and performance recording is to use that information to make a breeding decision. So it's really there to use that information effectively to make a breeding decision as such. Uh, so that's the benefits of mate cell. So just a bit on mate cell commercialization. Uh, how you can actually max access mate cell or who can access, access mate cell. Well the first thing you need to be, you need to be a member of a breed society that publishes selection indexes. And I'll explain why we need selection indexes more later on. But that's the first hurdle, I guess you would say. A breed society that publishes, publishes selection indexes. Uh, most breed societies do that these days, so uh, most of you would meet that criteria. Um, you also need to be a breed society that runs on ABRI's new database platform called ILR2, and that's a bit technical. But basically all this means is that it's using the, the newest pedigree and performance database system. Um, you basically should know you're on that if you're running monthly group analyses, group breed plan analyses. If you're running monthly group breed plan analyses in your breed, then you would be on ILR2 as such. Um, and you also need to be a member of breed plan to access this technology as well. Uh, it's currently available to Australian breed societies. Um, and we ha also have recently offers it to the New Zealand breed society. So it'll be coming online there and it'll be, be offered to our other clients around the world around the world as well going forward. Just a little bit on cost up front. Uh, basically to run, an eight, to run the average mate cell analysis, uh, it's going to cost $165 including GST per analysis. What that means if you're doing your joinings for this season coming up, you submit your details to, to uh, breed plan and I'll go through it in more detail later on. And the cost would be $165 for you to get your, your outcomes back. Um, and you'll see what the outcomes are in a minute. Um, for more complex analyses, there may be additional charge. So if you're taking a lot of consultation time and a lot of toing and froing, you may charge an extra $82.50 an hour. Saying that, all the mate cell runs we've done to date, we've only ever charged $165 because the time we've allocated or allowed for it has fit under that scenario. So basically, you need to think it costs $165 as such. Um, the other thing to think about there is that $165 may be billed directly from breed plan or directly from your breed society, depending on what sort of uh, deal they have with, with the breed plan and ABRI. Um, don't be too concerned about that. All it's saying is you'll be uh, billed $165 per analysis. Uh, so that's a bit on cost. Just a bit on upfront about how mate cell should be used. To obtain the most from mate cell, it's really recommended to undertake a couple of analyses per joining situation or season. Um, and I'll explain a bit about that now. The first reason is to undertake what's called a size scoping analysis. Where mate cell works best is if you throw as many sizes at the situation as possible. Because chances are the cows you have going to a joining system are going to be quite set. You know you've got your set 200 cows or whatever it has, happens to be. Um, but where we can really make the genetic gain is through the size you're utilising. So what mate cell can do is, is 
is basically uh, use as many sizes as you want to include in. So you might think, I'm going to use all these sizes out of this, these AI sire lists. I'm going to put in more and more yearling bulls. I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in uh, all my sire bulls and probably all the sire bulls in some other herds I'm going to. I'm going to put in all my current sizes. I'm going to throw as many sizes at it as possible and do the run. Um, and what this allows you then to do is to really define a list of size to see if you can go and access as such. Um, so basically, um, it's, it's what's called a size scoping analysis. And make it, make it can be used for that. So that'd be, that'd be the first analysis you do. Then when you're actually closer to that joining time and you think, okay, I want now, now assistance with identifying which actual size I know I've got access to to join to which cows, that's when you can do a second run. So your, your list of size will be a bit further defined or a bit smaller or quite a bit smaller probably, but your cow group will be quite similar, I suspect. So it's where you recommend uh, two analyses per uh, two, two analyses per, per mating situation. Um, saying that, you can use it as much or as limited as possible. If you only want to do one mate cell analysis, that's fine. If you want to do three or four per si joining situation, do some what-if scenarios, you can as well. Uh, but that's that's how mate cell should basically be used to get your mind around um, how, how we can use this technology. So before we move into how you actually submit the information, mate cell information to breed plan and how you get the information back, uh, we might just pull up for some questions uh, there, Gemma. So are there any questions we have at this stage? No, we haven't got any questions just now. All right, well, I'd encourage people if they've got questions about mate cell to type them into the chat field or the questions field and submit those. Um, it's something uh, definitely uh, happy to interact with you and answer questions as we go along. But uh, we will move forward now um, and, uh, again, submit questions as necessary. So moving forward, how do you actually access mate cell and how do you interact? Um, I'm actually going to show you how you submit data to, to, to mate cell on the template in a second, but there's two simple steps involved. The first one is just simply defining your list of candidate size and dams. So it's where you basically just need a list of which size you want to use in the joining period um, and also a list of which dams you want to use in the joining period. The second thing is you need to define is some herd specific parameters such as um, what is your target selection index, so within your breed what index are you really driving towards for yourself and your clients. Um, also what breeding strategy you do want to use. Do you want to use a more diversity strategy, so you, you want more diversity in your herd but still make genetic gain, of course, or do you want more high gain, so you're pushing more gain but you're happy with a little bit less diversity, or do you want to balance between the two? Um, also things like what's the maximum number of matings for each sire, whether it's AI, and you might say I've got five straws in the tank for that bull, but I've got 20 for that bull, well this bull's for natural joining, so I'm happy to join them to 50 cows. And also, what's, if it's a natural mated sire, what's the minimum mob size as such? So if it's, if it's a bull for natural joining, I, w I want to make sure that he has to be joined to 30 cows. I'm not going to join that naturally mated bull to one cow as such. Um, and also, a thing that's, that's pretty important for this is uh, grouping, so mating positions. So you might have a scenario where you say, OK, I want to use this range of size, but I'm only happy to use these few size over these group of cows, whereas uh, all these size can go over these group of cows. A way to think about that is um, heifer versus cow joining, so defining which size you're happy to go over your heifers compared to your cows. The information, which I'll show you in, in a minute, is submitted to uh, breed plan via a mate cell operator, uh, to a mate cell operator via a Microsoft Excel template, and that's available from the breed plan website, which I'll show you. And then within 24 hours, and normally it's a lot quicker than that, actually the mate cell analysis doesn't take all that long to run once we've got it set up properly. Um, you'll get your mate cell outcomes and your report will come back to you and you secure login within 24 hours. Okay, so the turnaround's quite quick. Um, but let's now look in more detail about how you submit the information um, as such to breed plan in regards to mate cell. So the first thing is you would need to go to the breed plan website as I've got displayed there as a screenshot. Um, this is the mate cell page and down the bottom highlighter you can see there's a little link there that says template for submitting mate cell information. That's just an Excel, Microsoft Excel template which you click on and download and I'll show you in a second. You can also go to another technical area with it. We have all our templates like our weights template and our traits template, etc. And you can actually use uh, the mate cell templates in there as well but this is probably the best place to find it in the, uh, the mate cell screen. So now just to show you a bit about the Excel template, so I'm just going to get out of PowerPoint for a second and actually open up the Excel situation. 
So you can see here, um, this is just showing my, uh, my Microsoft Excel template in front of you for submitting MateCell. We've got a range of tabs down the bottom. We've got instructions, example MateCell parameters, example data submission size and dams. Um, basically, the tabs that are in red are the ones for you to fill in to submit data. Okay? So basically, you'd go through, have a quick flick through these introduction, instructions and introductory notes and then go through and, and, and look at the uh, putting the mate cell information in the red tabs. If you're wondering how it should be formatted and what they mean, you can actually look at the example tabs. So if I just go through the example tabs, the example mate cell parameters, for example, what are they asking for? So just to go through this, uh, in the top line here, you can see it's asking for the breed. So the breed in this case is Angus and what's your herd ID? So in this case, we'll just say ABC. What's the target selection index? So in this case, we'll say this, this particular herd wants to target the long-fed CAAB, but in your breed, you might say, I've got another index that I'm interested in, so you can put that down. Uh, for natural joinings, it's also got a parameter in there, what's the minimum cow mob size for natural joinings? So in this case, it's saying, I'm happy to join my cows in a natural situation, or my size in a natural situation to a minimum of 20 cows. Um, the breeding strategy, this is where you need to select between the three, one, two, and three, one being high gain, two being balanced, and three being diversity. So it's basically where you would say, okay, I want to um, either go more high gain, more high, more high indexing, um, or, or three, which is more diversity. So you can run those scenarios and see, see how they compare. Um, for dam selection, so this is basically saying an option of one or two to basically identify your candidate dams. The option one is basically where you put some criteria in below and it goes and actually automatically gathers your dams. So you can see if I select criteria one and go down, the first thing is what's your approximate date of mating? So that'd be the in date or the AI date. Um, what heifers do you want to use? So what's the minimum age of the heifers at the joining date and the maximum age of the heifers to try and pick up the heifers to go into the joining? And in regards to the cows going in, um, what are the number of months prior to the date of calving that they had their last calf? So trying to pick up the cows and going in. So this is really there to gather the, uh, the active cows and the heifers going into the herd. And that can be utilised by any breed, of course. Um, what we're finding though is most people in this gathering of the candidate dam selection, they're actually selecting two. So they're actually just going and listing their, their cows they want in the, in the breeding program. Um, you can do the gathering, of course, but if you're happy just to put the list of cows down, you can put the list of cows down in one of these additional, additional worksheets. So that's the parameters, that's, uh, that's the information needed to find. The second set is really putting in your, um, your sire listings. So this is just an example, you can see here in this scenario we've put in 16 sires, this is their full society IDENT. Um, we've got a group code, so basically this is, this is what this is, is the group code, it's, it's our mating permissions. So which particular sires can be joined to which particular cows as such. Um, and I'll just explain that a bit more by going to our instructions. If I go to our instructions and go right down the bottom to this little table, I'll wait for the screen to catch up with me. Basically, you can see here, this is our matings provision matrix. So what it says is, if I give a sire a group code of one, they can only be joined to dams with a group code of one. Okay, so you also give your dams group codes, as you'll see in the dam submission template. If I give size a group code of two, then they can be joined to dams with a group code of one and also with dams with a group code of two. Okay? So a situation you can think about this, you can see in the EGs, you could say, okay, size with a group code of one is a natural size only to be joined to cows. Okay? So they might have a little bit more carb, a little bit more birth weight or something like that, so you only want to join them to uh, cows as such. Whereas size allocated as two, you might say, I'm happy for these, I want, I'm happy for these to be joined to heifers. But they're, if they're good enough, also join them to cows. So as you can see there, they've joined, if they're group coded two, they can be joined to dams with a group coded one and dams with a group coded two. Um, we've also got a repeated situation, uh, so basically group code three and four, which is basically a replicate of that. Um, and you could think of that in your AI situation. But really the group permissions can be utilised how you want to utilise them. Um, so for example, the other day I used a situation where we had a, a couple of sires come in with genetic conditions, so we made sure by group coding that they weren't joined to cows that had the genetic, same genetic condition status, of course. Um, so there's a range of ways you can use those groupings as such, um, but primarily, I guess they'll initially set up the heifer and cow joinings um, and be able to split your naturals to your AIs, uh, but uh, something worth thinking about. 
Group coding is also, to be frank, an area where people have, have most questions about in regards to mate cell when they're setting up their mate cell analysis. So what I would encourage you to do, like anything with mate cell, is if you've got questions about it, then give us a call and we can um, obviously assist you setting up correctly. So back to the SI form. So we've got our group codes there, and you can see we've got some listed of ones and twos and threes and fours. And we've also got a listing of maximum SI usage. So you can see this is the maximum number of cows this SI can be joined to. So up the top there, you can see these are our naturally mated animals. You can say we're joining those to 60. Um, these are also naturally mated, group code 2, joined to 40, and these would be our AIs. So these are the number of straws we've got available. So again, that that's depends on what your, your herd has got and, and what you're willing to put in there. But that's, that's obviously something um, you can put in as a parameter. Now, if you back to the uh, parameter field, if you selected in here 2, so your dams was, were created from a dam list, what you would need to do is then go to this um, submission template for dams and basically list your dams down, say full society ID and again their group code. So what size you're willing them to be mated to um, and you refer back to that, that mating submission table we talked about previously. So basically what you need to do then is once you've got that information submitted, you just need to email it through to matesell at breedplan.une.edu.au and the matesell operator will compile that into uh, the mate cell analysis, run that, and then return the results to you via secure member login within 24 hours. So that's, um, that's basically a, a really quick overview of the template. Um, I'll now go back to my PowerPoint presentation. And we can basically, uh, again, Gemma, pull up there and see if we have any questions about any of the stuff we've been through so far, including the introduction of mate cell or the uh, how, how information submitted for the mate cell analysis. Yeah, Christian, we've got a few questions coming through now. Uh, one of the questions is: is um, can mate cell the mate cell analysis handle situations where the bulls that you want to use don't have EVBs? So either animals that don't have Australian EVBs, or perhaps overseas bulls that have American EVBs. Uh, unfortunately, at this stage, um, the bulls that can be utilised within the mate cell analysis have to be recorded with the breed society and have a, sele a selection index available. So if they're bulls we don't know anything about, as in they're new overseas bulls that haven't been registered yet on the Australian system or, uh, or outside animals as such in that scenario, then unfortunately we can't utilise them at that stage. At this stage. Saying that, we have had quite a bit of comment on that through our few test runs we've done or our few, few runs um, since, since the start of the year. So it's something we're thinking about, how do we actually um, make that facility available? Because we know it's obviously a pretty important one. If you've got a, access to a new sire, then you would like to be able to put it into the mix as well, particularly on a pedigree point of view. So what I'll say quickly is we can't do it at this stage. It's something we're looking at to bring in the future. Thanks, Gemma. Okay. Another question that we've had a few times is, can the mate cell analysis be run using your own customised index? Uh, no, mate cell has to be run using the standard society indexes. We don't have the facility available to run uh, based on a customised index at this stage. Saying that, I think that's also a very similar scenario to bringing in outside sires and their information. Um, I think it's something we have to look at because we understand people have their own indexes developed. But at this stage, the way mate cell is today, if you wanted to run one tomorrow, you'd have to select one of the society indexes. Okay. Have we got time for one more question? Sure, yes. Okay. Uh, another question was, does the mate cell analysis give uh, greater weighting to animals with a high EBV accuracy, so more proven bulls versus yearling bulls, which should probably have a lower EBV accuracy? Uh, no, it doesn't take accuracy into, into account as such. Um, it'll basically uh, um, uh, utilise the index and the obviously the diversity on the other side of things. So I won't actually give more weighting on the use of a high um, on, a, on a high accuracy proven sire if it says a young sire might be better. Saying that, you can get around that situation by the way you you bring in your sires, your candidate sires, and uh, how you bring in um, how you do your groupings as such. So if you look at your outcomes from mate cell and you say, oh, I think it's using too many of my young bulls. If, you, if you're that way inclined, you're worried about that. Um, too many of them are young bulls, and I'd like to use a few more proven size, then, then we can't handle that in the analysis and the way 
um, the way we bring them in on a grouping perspective probably. Um, but yeah, good, good point, but um, not something that's taken into account in the mate cell run at this stage. Okay, I think we can keep going. All right, thanks for your questions, keep them coming. Um, now just uh, moving forward, uh, what, we're now, what I now want to show you is a trial mate cell analysis that was undertaken um, and this really highlights what mate cell does, I guess. But what I've done here, just to let you know, this is a Charolais example. But don't, don't be too worried about the breed. Obviously, this, this technology applies across all breeds. Um, this is just using a Charolais example. The candidates I used, there was 111 dams on the inventory, and that included their G heifers. And this, this was obviously done um, a few months ago, so the G heifers were, were still um, heifers at that point in time um, and, and weren't joined. Um, and there was obviously, and in this case, well, I bought in 160 AI size. So I said, let's just throw all the, the recognised Charolais size at it that, have, that had progeny in the last year or two. There's 160 of those. And basically what I said is the minimum use is zero, so I'm happy for them not to be used at any stage if it doesn't want to use them. But the maximum use is 20, so the maximum you can use these animals is, is 20 times if they're selected. I then uh, grouped the animals and used the mating submissions, basically saying that if the sire had a calving ease direct DBV of of, of less than negative 2%, um, they can only be joined to cows, not the G heifers. So again, I grouped all those sires a group code of 1, um, the cows had a group code of 1, and the heifers had a group code of 2, and uh, allocated them effectively there. Um, the target index I utilised was the domestic index for Charolais, um, which is like a domestic trade supermarket type index with a little bit of self-replacing built into it. And the breeding strategy I utilised in this scenario was high gain, so I said I want to push push gain, um, but still take into account diversity as such. So once we fed that information into mate cell, um, the outcome that came, and this is just now going through the report. So what the what does the report tell us? Um, the report comes back as a PDF, which is available in the mega member login as a download. Um, the report basically the front page tells you uh, what analysis it's from or what what. Um, what, what, as you can see here, it used the April 2013 EBVs in this situation for Charolais. Um, and it's also got a name of the report, which basically gives you an idea of when it was run and what, what parameter file we used. After this, there's a heap of introductory notes that I don't have on my screen, but basically explain what all the information means in the report. But just going through, it's all fairly self-explanatory. The first section it gives you is the suggested mating list sorted by sire. So this is just a cut down of the first page. And sorry, you have to squint a little bit to see the numbers. As you can see here, this first one is basically Doc Silver 362 is the sire, and it's saying his, he was used by AI, um, and it's going to be actually use him 20 times. And this is the last last three out of the 20 the, the heifers as such ABCG33E. Um, and going across the page, what it does then is based on that sire joined to that female, what the progeny mid-parent values will be. So what's the progeny inbreeding percentage? What's the domestic index? Because that's our target index, so it shows it up front and highlights it. And then what are the mid-parent EBVs across the board, across all our traits? Our calving is direct, daughters, gestation length, birth weight, et cetera, et cetera, out to our other indexes out the other end. And then what it does is actually gives a summary outcome, so for the, those 20 joinings that's done for that particular sire, um, what, the, what the average outcome is across those 20 animals. And then we go down, you can see here the next sire it's got is LT Western Edge, and it says I'm going to join into four, and these are the outcomes, and then LT Easy Blend and so on and so forth. So the first thing it does is give you the suggested mating list sorted by size. The second part is it gives you is the suggested mating list sorted by dams. So basically you can see here it's the same mating list, but basically you might want to look at it in a different way. You can see here we've got the calving year, We've got the ident of the female. We then got which sire it's joined to. We've got the progeny inbreeding percentage. Uh, we've got the dam, uh, the, the progeny, potential progeny uh, mid-parent values starting with the target index going across. So it's the same format, but just a list sorted by dam. Um, I should say in this scenario, this is giving us very low inbreeding values um, in this, this situation. In a lot of the other uh, analysis we've done, we get some some higher inbreeding values there, not that, they're, not that they're anything to worry about, but in this scenario we are getting quite low inbreeding as such, with high, quite high index, which is a good outcome. So that's the dam sorter list. What mate cell then does is, is give you a lot of summary outcomes. 
Okay, so it splits it up in, in this case it's just statistics split up into three areas. We've got candidate dams, candidate size, and what's the, the same stats but for the progeny coming out of those. So you can see here, um, if we go to the candidate dams, we've got min, max, average, standard deviation of range. The average uh, gives us the average inbreeding, the average domestic index, and then the average EBVs and other indexes across the board. So you can see uh, over the 111 candidate dams, the average inbreeding is 1% in this situation and the domestic index is uh, plus 21. If you look at the size that went in, it actually has used, remember we put in 160 size, it's actually saying we're going to use eight of those to do 111 matings uh, when the high gain, with, the, with the high gain scenario. So you can see here those eight size that it's picking, which would be identified in our size sorted list or our dam sorted list, it's saying the average inbreeding is 1.1%, which is still fairly low or very low, but the average index is plus 61, which is much higher than the candidate dams. Accordingly, if we did those joinings that are recommended, if we looked at the, uh, the, the values for the potential progeny, the inbreeding would be a lot lower, so we actually dropped inbreeding at by 0.5 compared to, say, the candidate dams and the, uh, the, the candidate size, whereas the average domestic index, our target index, jumps up. So we go from, from the candidate dams of plus 21 to plus 45. Still not as high as the candidate size, but obviously those sizes are helping us get there. Um, another interesting thing to look at is, from an inbreeding point of view, is the range value. So you can see inbreeding has dropped and the range has also decreased, particularly compared to the candidate dams. So the range was went from 0 to 7.4 percent, it's now going from 0 to 4.1 percent with a lower average. So it's really looking at that diversity thing as well. It's not disregarding that, even though we selected high gain, it's really looking at that as well. Um, so they're the, they're the main values there circled to look at in this report, but um, it's obviously giving us a good summary of outcomes. Uh, the other thing that this report shows us, I think, on a benchmark point of view, and this, this is from that same page as the previous information, I've just cut it down so we can see it. The top bit of information we've just looked at, so the average inbreeding in the progeny was 0.5 with a potential progeny, and the domestic index was 45. Now compare that to previous calf drops that are actually real calf drops that have been analysed um, and recorded with the Breed Society and through Breed Plan. So you can see in 2010 there were 53 calves. Um, the average inbreeding was 0.7 and the average index was 0 .9 to, uh, um, plus 19. In 2011, we had a lot more calves. This, this herd was in, expanded their numbers and the average inbreeding jumped to 1.5 plus 38. So we've still, you can see, if we did these joinings exactly as it said, they did, as, exactly as it suggests a mating list, um, we would get a lower inbreeding but a higher domestic index. Okay, so again, it's really pushing that through. What's important though, we have also put down all these individual EBVs for you to look at. So if you look at the, the index value, but then you look across and say, I'm not quite comfortable with the way that trait's going. For example, you might be getting leaner, or your calving ease might be going the wrong direction, or something like that. Um, then you, you don't have to do the mating. You then look at the situation, maybe bring in some other candidate size and rerun the analysis. So again, that's why we have all this information for you to make an informed decision. Also, from a uh, summary point of view, we include a range of graphs. So those graphs include um, distributions, basically, for all these things. So what we have here, the top one is the target index graph. So you can see this is the domestic distribution. The grey bars are basically a count of the dams with that particular index value. So you can see there we've got a one dam there down at minus 20 for the domestic, distribution, uh, domestic um, selection index. We've got uh, about 25 up around 12, and we've got a few out here at a higher end. And you can see where the potential progeny would be. So you can see it's really shifted the population a long way to the, uh, to the right uh, from a genetic gain perspective. From a genetic diversity and inbreeding perspective, you can see also what it's done. So it's not only just driven up genetic gain, but it's also compressed down inbreeding down towards the more genetic diverse end. Um, so what's interesting there is we don't have any animals out here now. It's basically pushed them all down to this end. I think there might be a plus 4.1 in this, this, this potential progeny, but most of them are down here at a very low level as such. Um, and that's what the beauty of mate cell. It can do those two things through the, uh, through the analysis it does. Um, we also go and display all the EBVs in distribution form as well. So basically what we have is we've got a distribution of 400 day weight up the top there, calving ease and carcass rump fat. So you can see in this situation, Compared to the candidate dams, the potential progeny are going to have higher growth, they're going to have better calving ease direct, and they're going to have more fat um, in regards to carcass rump fat. So 
again, you can look at that in regards to scenario saying, okay, am I comfortable with the way those traits are moving? So not only am I moving the index, but what about the traits moving with it? So just giving you some really good summary information to make your further breeding decisions on to seeing whether this suggested joining suits you. What's important also to understand is we just don't provide this information in a PDF file to look at in your, in your member login. We also provide this information in a CSV file. So all those joinings we give to you in a CSV file for you to log to in your member login as well. And you can actually download that information and, uh, and, and utilise it as you wish. You can obviously then create your own, um, the matings are all there, they're the same matings as in the PDF report, but you can utilise it and format it the way you want, maybe to take down the yards to do the AI program or something. So um, it's important we include that in CSV format. All, all CSV format means is you can open it up in Excel and do what you want with it. That's, that's all that means. So that's, uh, that's the uh, CSV format. And as you can see there, it's just got DAM carving year, DAM ID, SIR ID and so on. It's a very similar setup to the DAM sorted list in the PDF report. Okay, so what I also did for this exact same scenario, so just to give you a, a bit of a what-if situation, for this same scenario um, with the 160 AISIs and 111 dams for the Charolais herd, I ran exactly the same candidate lists, but I said I'm going to use diversity, the diversity option, instead of the high gain to see what the outcome was going to be. And you can see here <coughs> at the top, the candidate dams will be the same because the candidate dams doesn't choose, doesn't change but the candidate size has changed. We've actually gone from using eight size to now using 28 size out of those 160, which is no surprise. We want more diversity, so we're going to use more size to create the diversity. Um, and you can see there, I think the average index of the eight size was, was plus 66, and our average index of our 28 size have come back to plus 50. So we've come back somewhat, but not, not a huge amount. And you can see what we've done here, if we look at the potential progeny, we've brought back inbreeding a little bit, about plus 0.5, and the range has sucked back in again. So again, we, we're, we're giving us more, less inbreeding and more diversity, uh, but we're still making significant gain there at plus, plus 38 as such, but not near as much as that previous scenario, which is about plus 45 from what I can remember. So again, just a what-if scenario, if we ran the high gain versus the diversity, you can see what it can do. And this really then gives you the option to select which one you want to run. Um, sometimes it's a good scenario to to run both and have a look at them, run a, run a high gain and run a, um, run a diverse scenario using the same candidates and have a look at the results of saying which one I'm more comfortable with, um, which one makes more sense to me um, in, this, in that situation. So that's really the mate cell, the mate cell report and the, and the mate cell analysis and what it does for you. So very close to finishing this uh, presentation now, so um, in summary, I'd just like to finish off by, by saying where we, what we do to undertake a mate cell analysis, just so you've got it clear in your mind. So I guess the first thing you need to do is to compile a list of candidate size and dams. That's the first thing you need to do. Obviously, on a size point of view, the more the better. And think about that size scoping versus the mating allocation point of view. Do a size scoping analysis first and then a mating allocation second if possible. You then need to complete the mate cell submission template and submit that to breed plan and the breed plan operator via the mate cell at breedplan.une.edu.au address. You can also send re requests to that address too, or queries, mind you. Um, the, mate cell will then, the mate cell operator will then confirm the information has been received, and then they'll call you or email you to discuss any of the parameters if required. So they might say, okay, does this grouping make sense? Do we need more information there? Or this side doesn't exist. So if there's any issues, they'll get in touch with you. Um, if not, they'll run the analysis, and you'll get results back within 24 hours and an email will be sent to you confirming you. So that'll include your PDF and your CSV file, and you can download that to your, um, from your member login with your Breed Society. Um, uh, obviously, we say within 24 hours, but history's shown that it has taken uh, a very short amount of time to run mates so once we've got it set up. It's actually quite efficient to run the, uh, the mating program as such. So just remember that, but obviously in all situations, more time the better. If you need to do your joinings tomorrow, and get in touch with us very, very soon to get it run. So that's really what you need to go through to run your mate cell analysis. I think one of the main things to, to take away for this, if you've got any questions about mate cell, then make sure you get in touch with uh, your SBTS technical officer or breed plan um, mate cell operator. And you can see some contact details there for breed plan in any case. Um, so make sure you get in touch with us and we can talk you through uh, mate cell in, in much more detail if necessary. Um, if not, then uh, we look forward to receiving 
your mate cell submissions and uh, getting your reports back to you for discussion and uh, implementation. So Gemma, that's uh, my presentation finished up on mate cell. Um, do we have any questions before we finish up and uh, hand back over you to yourself to, uh, to finish up the webinar course? Yeah, so we've probably got two questions just before we, we finish up. The first one is, um, can, if you were to run a mate cell analysis for your AI cows, can mate cell also create for you a list of backup size? Uh, yeah, what, what we'd do in that scenario, we'd actually run two separate mate cell analyses. So your candidate cows would be the same, obviously, the, the cows going into the AI program, but the size in the first analysis would be just your AI size. In the second analysis, you just put in all your backup bulls. So your first one would be, okay, which ones are you going to AI, which size are you going to AI to which cows, and the second one would be your, your which uh, backup bulls you're going to put to which cows when, you, when they go out of the program. So um, we'd, be, we'd handle that by running two analyses at this stage. Okay. Uh, also, another one that we've had is if you were looking at a trait, say, like horn pole, perhaps, or coat colour, how could you um, manipulate the mate cell analysis to handle uh, traits like that? Yeah, it's where we would have to discuss it directly with you, but um, you'd basically use your, your, your group code, your mating permissions to handle that. So if you knew what the uh, if you if you knew you know from a from a horn pole point of view, you got a homozygous um, pole bull and you wanted to join into these heterozygous um, or, or, or horned cows, then you could use the mating permissions to make sure the matings happen correctly there. Um, but that's something we would need to discuss directly with yourself as the breeder to work out the best way to handle that. But I'm sure with our mate permissions and our groupings, we could handle that through the mate cell analysis. Okay. Um, and just to clarify as well, there was a question come through. If you send in your mate cell uh, template on the weekend, will we have it back to you within 24 hours? <laughs> Probably uh, the best way to answer that is we'd have it back to you uh, within a business day. So obviously we probably won't be running mate cell analyses on a Sunday night. So during the week's probably better. Uh, during the week's obviously better. Um, saying that's nothing's impossible, but definitely during the weekday you'd be guaranteed um, back within 24 hours. Um, on a weekend it's, it's obviously more difficult, um, but yeah, th think about it from a working day perspective. I should have clarified that. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for our questions tonight. I'll take, go back and do some housekeeping now. Okay, Gemma, I'll hand back over to you and let you finish off the webinar. Okay, thank you.